This film has one of the most horrifying scenes I've ever seen in a film. There's rape, murder, infanticide. How did you react when you read that in the script? Um, probably how you reacted watching it. Um, you know, I, I found it incredibly... Uh, Upsetting? Yeah. It was the, do you know what, this is the first script that I read after I'd just become a, a new father. A uh, father for the first time. It's the first thing that I read and I think after that scene I was like, this is a moment where I, I either put the script down. But I, I think there was something about the truth of that moment. Um, it was, it, I found it incredibly compelling and I don't know why, like I was just almost fascinated by these people and the world that was created and um, I continued reading and I think, uh, yeah, I found it incredibly confronting and difficult um, but for some reason I couldn't help but keep going um, and I think I think that's how most people feel when they watch it, I, I, yeah. I think it's incredibly upsetting. But What about you Ashley? Yeah, I definitely took a little bit of a breather kind of thinking, wow. But honestly, Jennifer's writing is so intelligent. Like you can, I mean, I mean, when you see it on the page, there's obviously some, sometimes there's a difference between what's on the page and what's on the screen. But um, Jennifer's writing is just really intelligent. And you know, unfortunately, these are realities of what happened. Then it's not something that she's just put in there for the hell of it. And and actually, just from a more technical point of view, you know, when we were working with a clinical psychologist, she said it's really important that Claire at this point lose everything because if she hadn't lost her child, there's no way she would sacrifice the child's safety in order to go after someone like Hawkins. And actually when, when a woman is already in a traumatized state from you know repeated abuse as, she, as Claire would have been with Hawkins, the moment that a psychologist would worry most for the safety of either the woman or the people around her is when she's lost her child. So it really was actually important as part of the catalyst for that to happen. And, and interestingly enough, you don't actually see it on screen, but I think a lot of people think that they do, which I think is part of how it's, mm. it's filmed. But yeah, it was, it was, it's, a, it's a really, really upsetting scene, but it's, it's, you know, these things happen even now with the Rohingya people. You know, there are a lot of, count, there are a lot of examples of when you can see that these atrocities are still happening, so it's not... And, and then there's purpose to it. Were you at all hesitant to accept the role because of that scene? No. No. Not no, even for a second. Not even for a second. No, I think, look, you know, I'm I'm an actor, uh, and I I pretend to be things that I'm I'm not as a human being, you know. And I think, I think what what I I, I relished in during this experience was pushing myself beyond my comfort zone, and I wanted to challenge myself, and I wanted to, I suppose, almost prove to myself that I could, you know, uh, um, do that, and. I think there was a trust in, in Jennifer to sort of say, I saw that she sort of said that she saw the potential in me to go to a dark, a dark place, you know, not albeit for just at work and not, I didn't carry the character home, obviously. Um, but it, it, it was, yeah, I, I just sort of, um, I felt like I needed to, as an actor, I needed to kind of do that, I need to go on this journey. And, you know, I, I've realised that it's probably beyond my comfort zone, maybe a little too far, that I, but I, I need... I'd only know that by getting put myself in that position. So, some people at the Australian premiere walked out. Mm. What would you like to say to those people? Look, I think that there are a lot of different reasons for why people leave. First of all, it's just you know that was that was also very um, that was misreported, and also at festivals there are always walkouts for a million different reasons. But look, there are some people for whom this film is just too confronting, and um, to use the modern term for it you know it's triggering for some people and that's fine this film isn't an endurance test you know it has its message and I think if you get to the end of it you you see what that is but you know what I love about our film and, and, and a lot of films in general is that it's it's a it's never going to have the same impact on on everybody and you know we've had victims of abuse for example who found it too much and had to leave and that is absolutely fine but then we also had victims who came up to us afterwards I had a woman after screening in, um, in LA who said as a victim of sexual abuse I feel understood after watching this film. I feel understood. And that's just massive, you know? So it's always gonna have a different effect on different people. And I would never judge anyone for finding it too much, but um, I would urge people to try and make it through the rest of the film because there really is an emotional payoff and, uh, and a very important message at the end of the film too. In America, the film will be available on Amazon Prime. Do you think it should have a special warning message on it? Um, no more than any other film that um, you know is is made. I think I think there's enough information you know out there to 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 kind of 
if people want to know, I mean, it, it depends on the person, really. Like, I, I don't think it's, it's a necessity, but like, I think if, if someone's really that interested in a film, it's usually because they've heard word of mouth or, you know, very few people will click on a film just because they like the poster or the title, you know. I think it's, people do research nowadays. There's so much at your fingertips. Uh, so many reviews, so many articles and And a lot of films have warning that they start saying strong strong language, strong yeah. scenes of sexual yeah. no nature, whatever, you know. Um, I think it's a really interesting conversation around this film in particular, and it's something that I find genuinely quite fascinating because there are so many films that are incredibly violent, even just this year. There's one in particular, I won't mention it, but the final scene of the film, I mean, people were laughing their way through it, and I had to watch through my fingers. It was so horrifically violent, and it's just incredible how much heat Jen has gotten for making a film that actually is more emotionally violent than anything else. And I think that that's exactly what people have a problem with. They're like, how dare you make us feel something that we don't necessarily want to feel. It's all fine when it's from an entertainment point of view, but if you truly try mm. to show the truth of how horrific it is, people get a little bit uncomfortable, I think. So I think I'm quite fascinated by the reaction to it. In the film, Ashling, your anger is quite palpable at points. Mm -hmm. How do you get yourself into the state to act like that? Um, there's obviously like mental uh, preparation. Honestly, one of the things I thought before taking this role was there's going to be potentially a cathartic element. I'm generally quite chill, but obviously I'm a human being, but I think I probably just bottle up lots of stuff. Um, so I thought it would be an opportunity to kind of just unleash some of that. Um, but from a more practical point of view, um, you know, Jen is really a great actress director. She facilitated a lot of things to make the performance easier. And one of the things I said to her was, I find physical movement very, very helpful for generating emotion. And so the poor <laughs> stunt guy would um, take out pads and I would just put on some gloves and just beat the hell out of them um, to really get my heart racing and my adrenaline going. And I would do that before our very <laughs> difficult scenes. <laughs> Uh, was it a bit like that um, viral video of Jack Nicholson getting ready to do The Shining, where he's jumping up and down? Oh, I actually haven't I've seen that. I've not seen that either, no. Yeah. So that sounds really fascinating. Essentially, he's kind of just jumping up and down, sort of frothing at the mouth, going... Rrr. I just imagine... That, there was a bit that of that from everyone. Pretty much, yeah. Job. I mean, I remember yeah. there was a scene where me and Damon were literally slapping each other's face, you know, hard. Like, I'd say, just hit me. Hit me, hit me. And it was before, it was before the second um, rape sequence and uh, it was like a four day you know um, process like or you know um, scene that we it took four days to shoot so there were moments so that we would start to kind of lose a bit of energy yeah, and yeah. I think we needed to rile each other up and keep keep our levels up there but I mean we all lost our, I lost my voice completely by the end of that because it was so much shouting and um, physical exertion so it's a uh, Jen would sometimes let me, you know, if Sam wasn't there, usually I would push against Sam for that same physical thing and sometimes Jen would just look around and realise there was no one else and she would just let me, you know, almost push her over. Yeah, so we had an incredibly generous group of people kind of helping one another get, get to the zone, I guess. Sam, mm -hmm. what can you tell me about season six of Peaky Blinders? Oh, I don't... Uh, there is a season six. <laughs> That's about as much as I can say. I know that Steve is writing it now, um... I can only hope that I'm involved. Uh, you know, I survived the fifth season, so fingers crossed. I mean, I, I love the show, so I, I can only, and loved my experience on it, so I can, yeah, fingers crossed. And Ashling, you played Lyanna Stark in Game of Thrones. Yeah, Have you been yeah. approached about a prequel series? Uh, uh, I think I just heard that one was not going ahead, but that was like set thousands of years before the Oh no, they're now doing a new one, apparently. Oh, not, yeah, but I, I think, I did have a little look, just to see. But it's like set 300 years before oh, the current one. Okay. They could do another one. They could do another they one. They could do another one. I'll probably be old, too old by then. 